The dreaded Kerberos. Alright, I have a lot to talk about in such little time, so I'm just going to get right into it. So Kerberos, again, is an authentication protocol mainly used by Microsoft, and it rides on what port? Port 88, that's correct. Alright, so client CCMP Seth wants to access a file on this file server. So what he does is he sends a request to the authentication server in clear text. All right? so he sends his username. Based on that username, the authentication server generates a secret, uh, a client secret key based on the username and password. And if everything is correct that the uh, client sent over, client will also generate that same client secret key. So now they both have the same key, and now they can send encrypted messages to each other. All right. So that was step one. After step one is complete, the authentication server sends two messages to the client and they are in the format of message A and message B. Again, this is sent by the authentication server to the client. He sends over a client TGS session key, which is the ticket granting service, and is encrypted with the newly made client secret key, and a TGT, a ticket granting ticket, which is encrypted with the TGS secret key. So only the TGS can decrypt this ticket granting ticket. So it's not made for the client, it's made for the TGS to identify the client, but uh, the client keeps a copy of it and he puts it in his Kerberos tray. So based on these two messages, message A, he gets the TGS session key, and in message B, he keeps the TGT, just in case he wants to access something, uh, another file server later. All right, so after that is completed, the client will send two messages to the authentication, or to the TG, TGS, I'm sorry, to the ticket granting service. And the first message, message C, contains message B. Message B is the TGT. Uh, also in message C, it is the file service ID. So that is file server one, FS-1. So he's like, all right, I want to get to file service-1. Here is my ticket granting ticket. Also, I sent you my authenticator card, which I've created and identifies me. So when the TGS gets message C, which contains the uh, TGT, he unencrypts it based on that secret key that only the TGS has and looks at the client ID, the validity period, and matches it with the authenticator card of message D. So the timestamp has to be within the validity period of the TGT and do the client IDs match from the TGT and the authenticator card. If they do, then the ticket granting service has authenticated the client. So after all of those messages are done and the client IDs match, the TGS will send two messages to the client. So let me put that there. And these are message E and message F. Let's see if I can put it there. All right, so the TGS sends this to the client after he has authenticated him, and message E is a client to file server ticket. And notice that it is encrypted with the file server secret key. How did the TGS get this uh, file server secret key? Well, again, remember, it is part of the KDC, which is the key distribution center, or I like to say the kingdom of keys because in a Windows domain, everything uh, authenticates to the domain, so he has the keys to everything in the entire domain. So the TGS sends this message E, which contains the client to file server ticket, and uh, in that ticket, it has the client to server session key plus the client ID, who is CCMP Seth. Uh, message F, is the client server session key encrypted with the client TGS session. And back in message B, we see that the ticket granting ticket actually had the TGS session key there. So he actually has it so they could talk securely to each other. 
So let me put that back. So the client has these two messages. So he now has a client to file server ticket. And he also has this client to server session key because that was contained in message F. All right. So good to go. Still, we're doing all, some sort of authentication messages back and forth to each other. And then all of a sudden, he got this client to, uh, client to file server ticket, which is mainly used for the file server itself. So let's put that up there, bring down message F. And now the client will send another two messages to the file server. And what he sends is he sends that message E because it's made for the file server because only the file server can unencrypt it. So he gives that to the file server. File server can unencrypt it because only the file server has the file server secret key. And once he unencrypts it, he sees that the client server session key is there. So now he has access to that. So let's put that there. So with that, he could actually decrypt message G and message G, which was sent from the client, is another authenticator card. So the file server looks at both messages, message E and message G, and does a comparison. Does the client ID for message E match the authenticator card in message G? And again, with this ticket, there's also going to be a timestamp and a validity period. And if that timestamp is within the validity period, then uh, the file server will fully authenticate the client. So that is that. So after that, after the client sends E and G to the file server, the file server will send the last message to the client. And once the client gets this message, and this is message H, the client will then trust the file server. And after that, they could finally transfer files to each other, or the client could actually access the file that it originally requested from the authentication server. So message H shows the timestamp from message G. So actually, let me bring that back. So there is a timestamp on message G and the file server sends back uh, that timestamp plus one and of course encrypts it with the client server session key which they both have and when the client gets this message it's expecting that original timestamp that he sent to him plus one and once it does then the client trusts the file server and then they could finally access that uh, that file so I know that there was a lot going on with all these messages, but if you step back and actually think about what's happening, client authenticates to the server, server gives him some information to authenticate to the TGS, TGS authenticates him, sends some messages back to the client that is used to authenticate to the server, server authenticates the client, and after the file server authenticates the client, the client has to authenticate the server based on this timestamp plus one. So that's why that last message I have right here is sent, uh, everything is sent in pairs except that last message. Whew. So this is Kerberos. Uh, I tried to stuff that in 10 minutes. Um, there's a lot going on, but the good thing about videos is that you could always rewind this so and, and break it down to fully uh, understand this. Um, so really enjoy doing this video and uh hope this was informative for you and i'd like to thank you for viewing and if you are wondering what ccmp seth was actually trying to what kind of file he was trying to access on the file server it was a kitty